Welcome back to Malmesbury Science, where today we're going to look at a really important chemistry practical technique, which is covered on all of the A-level specifications. And that is the method of heating an organic substance under reflux. Now what that means is that you would use a setup as I've got here. And heating under reflux means keeping something on the boil, but having a condenser vertically above the flask where you are heating your reactants. And obviously, as the reactants are boiling, some of the more volatile components of the reaction mixture will evaporate. They'll come up into the condenser, where they will obviously condense, and then drip back down into the reaction vessel. This means you can keep something on the boil for a long period of time without any loss of reactant or product. So you can see how I've set this up here. At the bottom, I've got what we call a pear-shaped flask, where I'm going to place my reactants very shortly. And then I've got a Liebig condenser placed vertically above it. You'll notice that I've got my two tubes from my condenser coming to my sink. And it is the tube at the bottom of the condenser that I've got directly attached to the tap. This is so that when I turn the water on, the water is pushed up against gravity to completely fill the condenser and completely surround the inner tube to make sure that all of the components which are going to be evaporated into this space are cooled effectively and condensed back in. So as I turn the water on, if you watch at the bottom here, you can see the water bubbling up and then it comes out of the tube at the top and just runs back into my sink. Now this method is commonly used at A-level chemistry for the oxidation of an alcohol and that's what I'm going to show you now. I'm going to oxidise ethanol using an acidified sodium dichromate solution that I'm going to place into my pear-shaped flask at the bottom. So, I have now placed my acidified potassium dichromate solution into my pear-shaped flask, and I did that just by removing the condenser and pouring it carefully through a funnel into the top of the flask. I've also added just a few anti-bumping granules. These are small grains of an inert plastic and they provide a large surface area so that as the mixture starts to boil, you get a series of small bubbles forming at the bottom of the solution. So the whole mixture bubbles nice and gently. Without them, you've got the risk of large bubbles forming, which could make the solution kind of go blop, blop, blop like that. And that could push right up into the condenser and potentially out the top if you aren't careful. One thing I should have mentioned earlier is I have not put anything in the top of my condenser. This is open, so there's no stopper or anything, because of course if I did close this off completely, um, I would run the risk of building up pressure inside my equipment, which could lead to an explosion. So my solution is currently bright orange, and that's due to the presence of the dichromate iron. That's the Cr2O7-2- iron and it's the chromium within that iron that gives us this very, very distinctive bright orange colour. I'm now going to add my ethanol, and I'm going to add one centimetre cubed of ethanol directly down my condenser and into my oxidising agent. So I've got my ethanol here, and I'm just going to use a dropping pipette to drop one centimetre cubed of ethanol straight down into the dichromate. Now, this is a very powerful oxidising agent and will actually start the oxidation of the ethanol immediately. And as it drips in, you should be able to see two signs of the chemical reaction happening. Firstly, this reaction is highly exothermic. And so you should see it bubbling and steaming as the ethanol hits the dichromate. You'll also see a change of colour, because as the ethanol is oxidised, the dichromate, or the chromium within the dichromate ion, is reduced to the Cr3+, or chromium ion, which is green in colour. So let's see what happens. So there it is. As the ethanol hits the solution, we see the reaction occurring straight away and the colour change occurring as it changes to a dark green colour which is indicative of the chromium 3 plus iron. You should also now be able to see some steam rising off the surface which is the evidence for the exothermic nature of this oxidation. So that initial oxidation that we've just observed 
was only taking the ethanol to ethanol. Now that's the oxidation of a primary alcohol to an aldehyde. And if that was what I wanted as the result and as the product of this oxidation, I could get that aldehyde now by distilling the product off immediately. But what I want to do is show you how to heat this under reflux, and that will then allow the aldehyde to be oxidized further to the carboxylic acid, and that is the product that I'm after in this particular experiment. So I've just changed my setup a little bit here, and now you can see that my pear-shaped flask is sitting in a water bath, which is going to be over a Bunsen burner. This allows for a gentle heating of the mixture, and allows me to keep it boiling away under reflux for 30 minutes to ensure that all of my aldehyde has been further oxidized to my carboxylic acid. So I'm going to pop my Bunsen burner under now, open up the air hole, and I'm going to start my heating. Now, as I said, this is going to take me about 30 minutes, so I'll come back to you very shortly. So I have finished refluxing my mixture, so it was on the boil for 30 minutes. And as you can see now, I've rearranged my equipment so that I can now distill my product off. What I've done to change it is I've just added an extra piece of equipment here on top of my pear-shaped flask. This is known as a still head. And I've got a thermometer, and this is a mercury thermometer that can read up to 300 degrees into my still head and the bulb of the thermometer is just level with the junction, so it'll take the temperature of the vapor at that point in the equipment. I've still got my condenser, but you'll notice my condenser is now to the side, slightly more horizontal, uh, whereas for reflux, it was directly vertical above the reaction vessel. And then what I've got at the end of my condenser is just a delivery tube into a collection vessel. And I've got a test tube here with some cold water around it just to help finishing off the kind of condensing process of my product. So as I did before, I'm going to now heat this up. And now, as the mixture in my pear-shaped flask starts to boil, the components will vaporize, pass along, and I will collect here. Now, because I had this under reflux for 30 minutes, I suspect now all of my ethanol will have oxidized all the way to ethanoic acid. In a few moments, I should hopefully have some of my product collecting in my test tube. And so now the final part of the experiment is just to test the distillate. If I fail to do this reflux correctly, I may still only have ethanol here, the aldehyde, and then I won't get a positive result to the tests I'm about to do now. The first thing I'm going to do is just smell cautiously. Ethanoic acid is the acid found in vinegar. And so as I smell, and remember we're not gonna take a great big lungful, we'll just waft the smell towards us. Oh yes, definitely. A quite strong smell of ethanoic acid or vinegar there. A bit like a tube of salt and vinegar Pringles, I'd say. We can do two slightly more chemical tests as well. Um, the first is I'm just gonna use some universal indicator paper. And so just taking a small piece from my book here, I'm going to take a drop of my distillate and very carefully just squeeze it onto the paper. Oh, there you are, look. Straight away, whoops. Straight away, you can see that strong red color indicating a very low pH. So that's definitely not ethanol I've made. That's definitely an acid. My final test, and again, this is just a general test for an acid, but remember these organic acids that can ma be made this way behave just like ordinary acids, is just to pop some into the beaker, and then I'm going to add sodium carbonate. Just like any acid, ethanoic acid will fizz with sodium carbonate, and you can use solid, as I'm doing here, or a solution, and as the carbonate and the acid react together, they release carbon dioxide gas. So final test, have I made ethanoic acid? Let's see. Oh yes, beautiful. So that's the process of reflux. It's bound to come up in your examinations and please make sure you know the difference between reflux and distillation.